Hello, lovely people. A few weeks ago, I did some tests of these subwoofers right back over here. And as a part of that process, I did a bunch of sweeps in Room EQ Wizard. And I've got all this data that I have no idea what to do with. So I figured I'd call up Rawcat and let him have a look at it. I mean, I'm okay, going to so for, first question, yeah. First question, yeah. because um, whenever I have any kind of data, I need to know kind of the small details. So first of okay. all, when you took the measurements, were they all taken on the same level, like power-wise? How did you determine the power level? I made sure the levels were matched when I did the the levels in uh, Room EQ Wizard. So I did so like level, acoustical. Yes. So I went into okay. Room EQ Wizard and hit the check levels button and made sure okay. everything was at the same level. So and so you were sitting, I saw, in the driver's seat or in the passenger seat? I was in the driver's seat. The microphone was in the passenger seat. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. But I don't think it matters. Your subwoofer, because I haven't seen any pictures of the actual subwoofer's location in the car. Okay. So they're on like on the back seat, yeah? So the I, I pulled the back seat out of the vehicle. The yeah. back seat is gone and I built, built a flat loading floor back there. Mm -hmm. And so uh, all of the subwoofers were um, firing up. Firing up. Okay. Firing so they're, up. they're not loading out of anything. Okay. And the right. ports? Firing up. And they all had side ports. Uh, and I think the 12th, the port was firing to the right. And the other mm -hmm. two, the port was firing to the left. Because that uh potentially changes a little bit uh yes. in the sense that they're not identical measurements yes because the port obviously it's producing like the tuning frequency which is about 30 hertz in your case right and, and all it of, is all coming of them so right at 30 yeah <laughs> yeah like in a short cabin probably it doesn't matter that much because like in in my car yeah if you have a subwoofer mm -hmm. on one side of the boot and you shift it to the other side of the boot it's a slightly different response Right. So, like, right. we always say that uh, wherever is your driving side, left or mm -hmm. right, the subwoofer mm -hmm. has to be on the opposite side in the back. Right. So it would have the longest distance. So yeah. I'm not sure if it matters a lot in like a truck because it is a short I, I cabin. Put, I put everything in the in the dead center of the back. Yeah. So they were all they're all in the dead center, and that sounds simple but it's tricky because the box with the four six and a half is four foot wide yeah yeah i made so, it four so you have drivers like from door to door plywood. exactly and yeah. the drivers were were, were spread out mm. exactly okay so they, it wasn't quite the apples to apples comparison that i hoped it was uh and i looking back i might have, I might have put more thought into making it as identical as possible yeah um, but it's fine it's like i always say like a lot of people like even in my under my videos comment that oh like your testing is not legitimate because you didn't do this or you didn't and you do that and like my view of this is that any testing is better than none y yes yeah as long and as it's like not totally wrong oh another question um crossovers okay for yes. the subs did you I, use any crossovers i do not believe that i had any crossover as a so it was like running full, full range I, I i thought i was running full range but i may have not have my DSP settings like I thought they were. Okay, so can I just like send you my files and let you uh, make a video and in them? Yeah, sure, of course. I'm going to do that probably today because I have nothing else to do. <laughs> All right. Actually, actually, I have loads of stuff to do. But yeah, I, uh, I'm going to look at those files. Okay. And I'm going to tell what I think. So this is the files. And for those that didn't follow what's happening here, basically Justin made a video uh, two weeks ago about three subwoofers, which is a single 12, dual eight, and four six and a half inch subwoofers in one box. And he measured all of them. And in this one, we're gonna compare the actual responses and see what we can see. So this is the graph that if you saw his video, you saw this graph, basically the frequency response from 20 to 100. In order to see things better, it's always good to step back a little bit. So let's step back, let's zoom out, and let's look at this like this. So these are three drivers, as I mentioned, 12, eight, six and a half, and all of them have slightly different frequency response. Now from this graph, we can see that, uh, to me personally, this is not a very typical subwoofer response, just because I'm not used to like short 
cab American trucks because Justin has a truck which is a short cabin and as you heard he had the subs facing up and the boxes themselves take a lot of space so there's not a lot of space inside and in short cabins in small spaces it is extremely difficult to have the very very low base so you see here it kind of it's a mountain between 100 and 200 which is very like punchy mid base but there's not really kind of any sub base just for comparison i can show you my car so this is a response of subwoofer i'm going to remove all of these just to leave one so this is my car 12 inch subwoofer in the very back but my car is a very long car that has a lot of cabin gain at the bottom end and that's why i have to have this response a little bit peaky at 40 but it goes all the way down to 20 hertz however in his case uh, that's what you get in a short cab truck where is very little space and no space for the sound wave to propagate to load and that kind of stuff so that's why you have this mountain that looks more of a mid bass response than a subwoofer response if you would have the same subwoofer same boxes in a car like mine you would have much much more low end i can compare this response to a lambo that i did so if you watch my video about the lambo i kind of tried to match it so the lambo had a eight inch uh, but again very very small cabin there's only two seats and no boot no nothing so the subwoofer was literally next to the driver very very close and you can see here the response is very very similar apart from the low end so the difference here is that when i measured this lambo it was a sealed box and it didn't have a infrasonic applied but justin measured with infrasonic applied so he did said that infrasonic is like 25 or something but you can see that the difference in the low end is quite huge but from like 45 40 hertz all the way up it's kind of the same now another thing that justin brought up during the video is all of this like what the hell is this thing so all of this is it, it looks like the subwoofer plays down then it's like nothing and then it picks up but this is it's noise so if i'm going to show you this one which is a typical graph of a floor noise of a measuring microphone so you can see the noise uh, every microphone has slightly different noise levels some microphones are a bit noisier and some don't so what i always advise to do when you're taking measurements take one measurement with nothing playing so just to capture the noise and see how low how high it is and then make sure that you have your measurement way above the floor noise so basically these me this measurement that he did is good all the way up to like 25 or something but here is just noise so we can totally totally ignore anything that is like below 20 hertz another subwoofer that i want to show you is it was from one of my remote tunes it was in a porsche that had an under seat subwoofer and here you can see something similar it's a very high peak it doesn't play low at all and it kind of rolls off so just the shape of this response i'm trying to explain that it is caused by the cabin not necessarily by the enclosure or the box so now if we're going to compare this all of these three drivers in a slightly zoomed out view i think it's a bit easier to see that the red one uh, has a much bigger response in the lower frequencies so we have a difference of 10 decibels at like 60 hertz something similar at 50 and a bit lower lower so at 50 hertz the difference is the biggest and we can say that this red line which is a 12 inch plays lower frequencies much louder like 10 decibels louder compared to dual eights or four six and a halves now if i'm going to remove the 12 the eights and six and a halves play very very similar you see the differences in this response it is due to the fact that like six and a half as he mentioned is four drivers and they span from the left side of the car to the right side of the car whereas the dual eights they're kind of more in the middle so they're not identical boxes that's why you have not identical response but from this we, we kind of can say that like this range between 34 and 56 
uh, the eights have a little bit more energy here but it's i think it's more like error of measurement so we cannot really tell the difference between the eights and the six but a 12 is clearly playing more at the bottom end now another thing let's have a look at the distortion this is the distortion data that is kind of zoomed out so all of these the gray lines you can see here the gray lines that are not clear uh, this means that i'm just going to leave one for now just to show you um let's say six and a half so these gray lines means that the measurement is in the floor noise and basically you would need to make a measurement on a higher level in order to have more accurate measurements so this is just uh, in the noise but if we're comparing like six and a half and eights you don't look at any numbers that are given here but you look at the number on the y-axis here on the side so we have here distortion of one percent two percent five ten and so on and so on and here we have the frequency so six and eights they to me they play identical there's not really any difference the biggest difference is at the higher frequencies like between here between 120 and 200 and up but to be honest you're not going to play subwoofers that high anyway so just made this measurement like with an open crossovers that's why we can see it but if you cross the subwoofer at like 60 70 80 hertz here all of this it doesn't matter because it's going to go into the crossover and what matters is here so again i'm not sure about the power level but according to the measurement it's about 90 decibels in level so it's like normal listening levels 90 db and for this we have six and a half and eights all the way down to 30 like 30 to whatever is going to be crossed is one percent a little bit higher here a little bit so it's like one to three percent of distortion now is it a lot or is it not for subwoofers eh, you're not going to be able to hear one percent no chance for subwoofers you might be able to hear 10 or even 15 percent so this distortion is inaudible now i'm going to remove one just to let's leave the six and i'm going to add this the 12 so for the 12 you have a very different picture we see that here that they kind of intersect and basically this means that the 12 everything below 50 hertz the 12 is cleaner because you can see it plays down to 25 like below one percent distortion and everything above 60 hertz it has much higher distortion and it kind of makes sense when you think about it like these six and a halves i always say six and a halves for me personally it's not a subwoofer it's a mid-base driver so mid-base driver smaller drivers they will play cleaner at the higher frequencies and not as clean at the lower frequencies whereas bigger drivers such as a 12 is going to be much cleaner at the lower frequencies and not as clean at the higher frequencies because a 12 inch playing 150 hertz unless it's a pro audio mid bass driver then yes but if it's a like dedicated subwoofer it shouldn't be playing this at all so again if you cross it at 80 hertz somewhere here all of this is going to go away and you're going to have a much cleaner response so from all these three you can see six and a half and eights they're very similar but the 12 significantly cleaner compared to the other two so with a single 12 you have a much cleaner response even if it's not audibly perceivable this distortion but objectively looking at it the lowest frequencies like a 30 hertz to 40 50 it is cleaner on the 12 inch and from the frequency response as well we can see that this level is much higher as well so say what you say about small subwoofers eight six and a half tens whatever my advice is always go for the bigger driver and this these measurements to me at least they prove that bigger drivers are better because they have much more response at the lower end and at the same time they have lower distortion at the lower end so that's it thank you very much for watching and i see you on the next adventure